few more minutes. While we're waiting, um, one of the things I wanted to do is thank the NSHSS team. We've been a partner with NSHSS for oh, quite a while now, and it's so nice to uh, kick off the school year uh, with one of our favorite partners. And uh, we appreciate their hospitality. And by we, I mean Neely Allen and myself. Um, we'll do a more in-depth uh, uh, introduction in just a second. And I think it's a good time to get started. So I'll go ahead and get started. Again, welcome everyone. Um, this is Amy Von Kainel from Volunteer Crowd, and I'm joined by Neely Allen, also a member of our team. And today we're going to talk about volunteer shadowing and in the future, work experience credentials, letters of recommendation for holistic admissions. And if I'm being honest, it's for so much more. So while I'm talking, I know that chats are coming in and we really appreciate that. We're gonna do our best to get to them. Um, while I'm speaking, Neely will uh, an answer what she can. They're coming in rapid fire, I can see. Um, and then we will take Q&A at the end. So we appreciate your patience as we get to everyone's questions. I mentioned our wonderful team and um, Megan Thomas is, uh, has been with us uh, pretty much from the beginning. And Megan is the go-to contact to find uh, specialized volunteer projects. She hosts office hours uh, a few times a month and she can be reached at students at volunteercrowd.com. Neely is really uh, the one who is spearheading our digital credentials. Um, so this is her area of expertise. She's immersed herself in it. And um, to top it off, Neely also has experience um, working for a college. And so she is a wonderful person to really understand how you can use these digital credentials. And I've got Neely's email address there as well. Neely also spots like student volunteers on our blog. And uh, some of those students are actually from NSHSS. And then there's me. This is what, whoops, this is what I look like um, when my video is working. And I'm your contacts for questions about the website or the app. Um, the President's Volunteer Service Award. I know that's always a popular question. The service transcript and I host office hours as well. Funny thing about those office hours, they are one hour after this um, started. So we are going to have the link for our office hours. In fact, Neely, you're welcome to put it in at any time. Um, they're weekly office hours. So if you miss us this week, don't worry. Willie, we'll see you next week. So again, a big warm welcome to everyone and let's get started. I know a lot of you came here for great volunteer opportunities and you know, there's a lot of uh, confusion about what type of volunteer opportunities students can engage in during these really, really unprecedented times. And the answer is a lot, a lot of different volunteer opportunities. So I welcome you all to go ahead and uh, scan the code and uh, start looking um, go to find projects at the top of volunteer crowd. And you can start looking as we're talking about the different volunteer opportunities. I also wanna just tell you how to get the most from today. So first of all, sign up because that will give you visibility to all of our wonderful resume building projects and credentials. And then learn about the volunteering and the shadowing opportunities uh, that we have, as well as the new credentials that are um, when I say new, I mean really new. We just launched them two weeks internally and our first group of students will be putting their credentials on LinkedIn. So I can't wait to show you what that looks like. And at the end, ask tons of questions about projects, a portfolio, the letter of recommendation or anything, and then join us. Um, join us for our weekly office hours at calendly.com forward slash volunteer crowd connect. We're meeting today after the webinar and every Thursday at five o'clock. Um, the topic on Thursdays is the President's Volunteer Service Award. I speak for about 10 minutes about the award and then you can ask us anything. So what we like to focus on is volunteering the easy way. If you're like most students, you've been Googling your volunteer opportunities or asking around with friends, you've been using Google Forms or a paper volunteer log um, to find out about volunteer or to track your hours. And then when it comes time to report those hours, um, to school for the call for the common app 
for an internship, for a service award, um, you really have no official document to show for it because your school's kept one set of hours, you've kept another, and your club has kept yet another set of hours. So what we offer students is a way to um, track and verify their hours, whether you got the volunteer project on Volunteer Crowd or not. We've got great projects, and we also recognize that students are engaging in great projects. So let's start with how the world has changed. Um, unfortunately, we only have um, an hour, so I'm just going to go over at a high level. Basically, students um, now more than ever need to demonstrate skills, which is pretty crazy if you think about it, because um, you've been told probably since as long as you can remember, it's about your test scores and GPA. And now colleges really want um, better visibility. It's always been about demonstrating character and soft skills and volunteering and engagement in the community. But now that's really, really been emphasized. And it's been difficult for colleges because when a lot of those schools went test optional, it left a big hole in um, your volunteer application. And they wanna fill that hole with more information. And they really wanna understand more about your non-cognitive strength and skills. And there's no easy way to say it. They want proof in the post varsity blues era. They need to know that we need to go beyond self-reporting of our hours. And then when you get out into the working world, whether it's an internship or whether it is a um, paid or unpaid internship or your first part-time job, colleges um, really want to see character strengths. And so having something tangible to show them that is really encapsulates all of your volunteering is helpful. For example, having one document that puts together all the Boy Scout, middle school service learning, youth group activities, um, any type of volunteering you did to get ready for college and your college resume, school or club volunteering, um, anything that you're trying to really um, demonstrate for scholarships or a job application mm -hmm. or graduation requirements. And then if, if that's not enough, when you get into college, you might be volunteering for sorority or fraternity or volunteer crowd works with medical schools. And those students are going to apply to become doctors, nurses, physicians, assistants, ODs, radiologists, and they have to volunteer and they have to show proof. Um, holistic admissions is not new. It's just kind of being rolled, pushed down to the undergraduate um, volunteer application in a pretty um, big way this year. So we offer one place for you to put all of your volunteer projects, we verify them, and then we give you one easy way to volunteer, and that's through the app. Um, so um, we are on the App Store. You're welcome to go there and look for Volunteer Crowd. And by there, I mean iOS. We do not have an Android app right now, but we will be launching a mobile web version in 2022. But once you download that app, you can um, find volunteer opportunities. You can save them and easily track them with a few clicks. Um, you can add your own volunteer projects, uh, watch the status of the verifications, uh, watch the strength and skill endorsements come in under recommendations. And then we have a pretty unique feature where we can certify your hours for the President's Volunteer Service Award. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in more detail. So first, what you wanna be able to do is find volunteer opportunities. So if you haven't already done this, go ahead and go to the website and let's go to find opportunities. And so we have an example here. A lot of our students, as I mentioned, want to go into the healthcare field. So here's an example, whether you're on the app or on the website, you would go to find projects on the website. And then we can see the list of causes like health, for example. Um, and then you would select uh, a virtual internship um, for health, virtual or an internship. And then once you find a project you like, select, I want to volunteer. Don't worry, it doesn't mean that you're obligated to go and volunteer tomorrow. It means that you're going to get information on how to reach out to that organization. Um, because we work with students from age, from middle school, around age 10, through uh, students in med school, so full-fledged young adults, um, we do not share your contact information, 
um, out of privacy. But what we do is we give you all the information you need to um, contact that organization. And we don't put just any organizations on volunteer crowd. We look to make sure they're taking students right now. We understand the age requirements. Um, we list whatever your obligation is. For example, maybe you have to volunteer a minimum of four to eight hours a month. And so we lay it all out there for you. And then be sure to check your email. Um, this is the part where I really wanna talk about a new feature that Apple put in. Um, sometimes when you are downloading an app, you can register but mask your email address. I wanna let everyone know that um, this has been new and we've had some growing pains with Apple with this because if you mask your email address and you request information on a volunteer project, we can't send it to you. So think about that trade-off when you're deciding how to sign up. Um, and uh, you're welcome to sign up through Google, Apple, um, Facebook, or just regular old email. And then I'll give you a sense of what you can expect. So when you go to find volunteer opportunities, um, you can uh, search more options. You can pick out the volunteer project type and we're adding shadowing in the app. Right now, you can look on the website and find shadowing opportunities. This is a really new and growing area for us. And it's really exciting for a lot of students that are going into STEM and healthcare and environmental type projects where you can show that maybe you uh, shadowed an environmental scientist or you shadowed um, a sports medicine doctor or you shadowed in a clinic of some type or an engineer um, and you can show colleges that you really invested in understanding what that profession is all about. They really like informed students. They like to know that you've really thought a lot about that major. And so um, when you're able to do shadowing, um, it's really helpful uh, to let colleges know that you've invested the time and you take that major very seriously. Um, and then you can select good for, maybe you're looking for a group project to lead. Maybe you're looking for leadership opportunities. Maybe you just turned 14 and you wanna know um, what projects are available for 14 year olds. And then that famous, I wanna volunteer, um, select that. Um, what's really nice is that it saves it to the app. So when it's time to, uh, time to track your hours, it's already there and check your email, whoopsie. So we focus on academic related projects. So what does that mean? If you only need to get 10 hours, um, we have those types of projects. Um, some of the do it yourself or low barrier ones. And we are so sensitive to um, how hard it is to volunteer, especially during COVID-19 and in the last two weeks when there was all this news about the Delta variant. So we just put out um, easy ways to get your volunteer hours. And we have things like download an app, go to whatever practice you're going to, whether it's basketball or track practice, and accumulate, um, accumulate uh, exercise time and then donate a meal. And we will count that for volunteer hours. That's one of our nonprofit partners. So anyone who signed up for this webinar, um, in the next few days, you will get our easy volunteer opportunities, easy hours volunteer opportunities. That, in addition to you can look for different, um, uh, more hardcore volunteer, academic um, related volunteer projects. Like um, if you're interested in becoming a veterinarian, work at a wildlife rescue center. If you want to, um, if you're in CTE and you want to um, look at uh, digital arts, then we've got opportunities for you to use, put some of those graphic skills that you've been learning. Um, if you want to become an EMT, as a stepping stone to going to medical school. Um, we've got shadowing opportunities, and then we have opportunities in hospitals as the hospitals allow. And it's very on again, off again, we stay in touch with that. If you are in a more rural area, we've got virtual volunteering in STEM. Um, and so we have really focused on trying to meet students where they are in volunteering and really trying to understand all of the different sensitivities, all of the different scenarios in volunteering. And then here's just a sample of some of our virtual shadowing opportunities that you'll find on Volunteer Crowd. So you can add, shadow different professions and add these experience hours to your transcript. 
And here's where I'm going to turn it over to, over to a real expert, um, Neely Allen, who is spearheading our digital credentials launch, um, which uh, is right upon us. Um, we are now able to launch digital badges and put transcripts out on, um, um, out on a web page for you as well and connect them to your LinkedIn profile. And I wanna let Neely uh, take over here. So Neely, go ahead and chime in and I'll go ahead and advance the slides for you. Thanks, Amy. Um, so like Amy had mentioned, um, I, thank you for mentioning expert Amy, but yes, we have definitely dived in and we are learning all that we can about digital credential, um, the digital credentialing system and how that can impact your portfolio and what it can do for you. So um, Amy and I attended a training not too long ago by Character Collaborative and they discussed how admissions offices are actually changing how they look at your portfolios. And so in doing that, we learned that this coming fall, they are actually going to start taking that deep dive into your app and looking at um, holistically what your portfolio has to say about you. So they're gonna look at your letters of recommendation and know what the recommenders have to say about you. Um, when were you motivated during the time that you, you know, were whether it was volunteer service or in class? Did you express leadership? Were you involved in clubs, teams, volunteer projects, anything like that? What your contributions said about you and what did it teach about um, what did it teach you about yourself? So they're going to look at all of those things. Um, and so we just found that through our partnership. <clears throat> Um, with parchment that we can actually begin offering letters of recommendation as a service. And so that is something that we are going to be um, offering very, very soon. Like Amy said, we just kind of launched that internally within the past couple weeks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So also during our research and while we were doing that training, we also saw that the Harvard, Harvard Graduate School of Education recently published a write-up that emphasized the importance of recommendation forms and actually gave some information on what that could look like. So based on, again, like I mentioned, your character um, strengths, your self-identification and how you actually um, portray yourselves, forced choice character questions from the recommendation writers, things like that. So um, again, recommendation forms we realize should be a portrait of your, your core values, your character strengths. And so while building out this letter of recommendation um, system and, and service to you all, we're taking all of those things into consideration. So we know exactly what to, um, to have the recommender say about you. We, we're giving them some, some, some suggestions. So it should definitely impact your portfolios in a very positive way. So again, I mentioned just a little bit ago that we have a partnership with Parchment. Um, we've um, actually been partnered with them for quite a while now. That's actually how whenever you build a volunteer service transcript, that is actually how you could receive it and send it off. So again, we've kind of extended our partnership with them to offer this letters of recommendation um, to make it easier and to make it you know, more quickly and efficient to um, be received to your recommender and to also be sent on to your college of choice, to your employer of choice or whoever you want it sent to. <clears throat> so this is what an example of a service transcript would look like. So as you can see on the screen, it says your impact is unique, just like you. So, uh, you know, not all service transcripts look the same. Obviously, you know, the more you participate, the more you would have a service transcript that looks like this. Um, but as you build that, you know, it's going to show your strengths. As you can see, there's endorsed skills on here. So nonprofits. <clears throat> nonprofits will, you know, actually endorse you with these skills. So it's a great way for, again, those colleges or employers to just, you know, get an actual representation of what you as the student and future um, employer would look like. Um, so with our credentialing system, actually, LinkedIn, we are partnered with LinkedIn, so you can actually share your credentials straight on LinkedIn. And so 
Um, we've actually developed a one button connection system that will actually make sharing your credentials on LinkedIn convenient and easy, um, quick and efficient. So once you've earned credentials, you will receive an email from Volunteer Crowd with that information in it. And it's gonna be real easy. There should be like a link in it, LinkedIn icon or something like that attached and there'll be a link in with, within the icon and you'll just open that up and there, you, where, there your credential will be. And then you can just add it right into your LinkedIn profile. So again, showcasing yourself for those colleges or employers. And then this is <clears throat> what our digital badges look like. So again, part of the credentialing system, this is part of that. So you can receive a link again through that email and you can use it for college colleges like on the Common App, um, the Coalition App, you can use it for internship um, applications, scholarship applications, employment applications, whatever that may be. But you can, this is actually a digital link that you'll receive. And then once you receive that, you'll click on that link and this will be the badge that appears on that link. Um, so you'll see that the ones in blue are based on shadowing credentials. So here are true life real examples. We offer them in 50, 100 and two hour increments. And then the green one is an actual volunteer credential. So again, kind of based off of what those um, nonprofits or, or whatever award you, then we will develop that badge once you have obviously completed so many hours in that field. Um, and then again, you can put that wherever any of these um, on any of these platforms, but it's going to be a great way for you to showcase yourself and what you've actually done within those areas. I forgot I was on mute. Thanks so much, Neely. Um, yes, and so we're really excited and proud of this. Um, especially the LinkedIn integration. And uh, all right, I'm gonna ask our host NSHSS, I can't see what's in chat right now because I'm presenting, but I would love to know how many of you already have LinkedIn profiles and how many of you are planning on asking for a letter of recommendation. And uh, like Neely mentioned, you know, you're probably going to be asking teachers and um, coaches for a letter of recommendation. And because you're already volunteering and the nonprofit coordinators know you, we're going to make it really easy for you to ask for a letter of recommendation about how you're giving back to your community as well. So you'll have a really well-rounded application. So the badges are one way that we automatically um, showcase your dedication to a given cause area or a different career path in the case of uh, job shadowing. Another way that we are able to um, showcase your dedication to your community is we are certifying um, organization for the President's Volunteer Service Award. And so this is just a quick table. Um, again, our, we have a session right after this. It's our regular office hours, um, Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, and this is a huge subject. So I just like to go over at a high level um, based on your age, think about how old you were on January 1st of this year. Now look at the table and that tells you how many hours you need to qualify for the President's Volunteer Service Award. And we count your hours based on January 1st through December 31st. Um, and so um, if you have questions that I know there are always questions, put them in chat, we'll answer what we can and then please join us for the President's Volunteer Service Award. And I'm just going to do a spoiler alert here on one of the questions that we always get. Do you verify past hours? The answer is yes, but I wanna make sure that everyone is aware of our policy. Um, you're, I, I imagine there are a lot of students out there that are already members of clubs like National Charity League, Assist Teams, Key Club, and SHSS. Um, lots of memberships out there. So we begin the day that you join. We begin, we count the volunteering on the day that you join. So if you join today, we start counting the volunteering that you've done today or after. A lot of students have asked us, especially rising seniors, to go back and verify their hours. And we can, but we prorate the College and Career Advantage Plan, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, as if you had joined back then, because uh, effectively it's the same amount of effort. Um, so I hope that helps and um, we will show you the link for office hours. And then 
I will invite you to ask us anything, but before I do that, I just wanna make sure that you're aware of the offer. So today you're the first group to find out about our digital credentials, so welcome. Um, and we are giving away our digital badges and transcripts for free for uh, today. We will start charging these. They'll be part of the registration process. It'll be a digital registration fee. It does save you money in the long run because if you send a transcript um, through a transcript send service, it's typically $10 per transcript that you send. And so we will offer you uh, links to your digital badges and transcript that you can put on LinkedIn. You can put it on um, the Common App. You can put it on a job application. You can put it on um, an application um, for merit aid on a uh, college because there is there are discretionary funds for merit aid. Um, and this is an official document. So it's just like if you had sent your um, your official transcript, um, your official academic transcript. It carries that weight because we verified it and we're willing to stand by it once we verified it. And only verified hours go on the transcript. And so um, again, you get for a college and career advantage plan, you get all premium volunteer and shadowing projects. And Neely, if you could just put in the link to plans, that would be wonderful. Um, in the chat, you get tracking, the verifications, um, the character endorsements, the PVSA certification, if you qualify, there are guidelines we have to follow as a uh, certifying organization. And then what we're throwing in are the free digital badges and, er, and transcript that you can put on LinkedIn or you can share the link. That's different from ordering from parchment. Um, so like I said, you will end up saving quite a bit of money with this and it's free today. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these links here and Neely will add those to chat. And then we can start um, answering some of those questions. So uh, for our NSHSS hosts, um, is do you prefer that I go with the Q&A first or with the chat? <laughs> I'm not used to doing both. You can go with the Q&A first, okay. Amy. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. So we've got a question about the app, um, putting an email and a birthday. Um, I'm not... Brianna, I would um, recommend that you join our five o'clock session because it's difficult to troubleshoot with everyone on the call. There are all, all sorts of different questions I have to ask. Um, let's see, do you find projects on the website? Yes, you do. Um, would you know, let's see, I'm not sure why your iPhone won't let you create um, an account on the Volunteer Crowd app. Um, we've had many people sign up today. Um, it's hard to say, so sorry about that. Um, again, I encourage you to uh, join us at five o'clock. Are there virtual volunteer opportunities? Yes, when you go to find opportunities on the webpage, um, what you should do is um, go to project type and select virtual, and um, then it will pull up the virtual volunteering opportunities. And one of the things that um, I should mention is because we, we are coming in and out of a pandemic, but the pandemic lasted a long time. We really focused on virtual volunteer opportunities for the longest time. So now we're starting to populate more projects where the where students want local opportunities and we pretty much go where the demand is. Um, how do you include volunteer hours from a year ago? Not through the app, you go ahead and you add them. Um, I should mention there's a seven day free trial so go ahead and add your volunteer hours. And if you want to include those, um, we can communicate on that. Um, and again, you can contact us at impact at volunteercrowd.com about verifying past volunteer hours. And we also recommend that you um, attend one of the office hours every Thursday at 5 p.m. Could you use volunteer hours for school club volunteer requirements? I love that question. Yes, so it now one of the things I don't wanna do is answer on behalf of Beta Club and NHS. They may have requirements for um, the type of volunteering you can do, but if you have volunteered for Beta Club and NHS, you can add those to Volunteer Crowd. We verify those and then they are included on your volunteer transcript. And you can also share that volunteer transcript um, you can also share that volunteer transcript 
um, with your school, with NHS, um, and with the Beta Club. We've had a lot of students who have done that with NCL, and the list goes on. Um, and is it important to start a LinkedIn profile as a junior or senior in high school? Yes, it is. Um, it, I'm sure you've been counseled about your social media accounts. This is a very positive way to get great, um, to get great exposure for the work that you're doing in your community. And one of the uh, office hour uh, specialty uh, topics is really about digital credentials and LinkedIn. So please go to uh, the link at calendly.com forward slash volunteer crowd and look for one of those and we'll, we'll talk about LinkedIn and um, how you can add your digital credentials. How do you start job shadowing? Go to find projects on Volunteer Crowd. You can find that at the top of the web page, and also um, you can go to find in the app. Well, we've added it to the web page, and under Volunteer Project Type, um, go ahead and um, go ahead and uh, look for the type shadowing, and that's where you can find shadowing opportunities. Um, if you already have three letters of recommendations, can you use them? Um, I believe that you would get the, that's a really difficult question. I haven't heard that one before. Um, our letter of recommendation is really focused around uh, character and also, um, and also around volunteering. So I would think that that's a better question for your guidance counselor. What we do is we offer you the opportunity to request one from um, a recommender. We give the recommender prompts around your character um, related questions, and then we send it off to college for you. So that's a great question. Thanks for that. I haven't gotten that one before. We're going to work on a good answer for it. Um, should you create a LinkedIn for the credentials um, to be more useful when looking for internships and shadowing? Yes. We have had students say that they have shown their transcripts and it has been helpful for getting that first part-time job or an internship or something like that because you have proof that you actually did it. It's also nice to have a letter of uh, recommendation waiting as well. Um, would you consider character extracurricular activities on the same level as volunteer hours? And if not, which is a higher value? I'm going to really punt that one over to your um, guidance counselor because I believe that depending on the um, college that you're looking at, they may, be, um, they may be valuing it in a different way. And actually, Neely, if you wouldn't mind jumping in because you've actually worked at a college and you've, so you understand firsthand how different colleges value different things in different ways. Can you speak to that question? Sorry, Amy, um, can you repeat the question? I was trying to, trying to answer some chat questions and Q and A's. Oh, of course. The question is, would you consider character and extracurricular activities on the same level as the volunteer hours? And if not, which one is the higher value? I mean, I think from my experience when, you know, working in the college sector, I mean, anytime students are involved, it definitely weighs, you know, heavily to, you know, against those who aren't involved. So I don't really, I, I can't really answer, you know, especially for all colleges saying that one is weighed more heavily, but um, I just think in general, just students being involved, volunteering, putting in the, in the extra effort, job shadowing, what not that may be. I mean, again, the effort that students put in definitely, you know, um, gives them like a, a one up on, on the people who don't go above and beyond and um, spend their free time doing, you know, other things. And, you know, obviously, I think it is, it definitely is um, something worth noting. Yes. Great. And then this is a really good question. What age do you have to be to join LinkedIn? 14. That's LinkedIn's requirement. Um, if you haven't volunteered before and you're a junior, can you still um, can you still volunteer? Yes. In fact, we had somebody who is um, who was an NSHSS member. She was a sophomore. She volunteered about 30 hours the first year, uh, more the second year. And by her, and she, as she's going into her senior year. She is actually started two nonprofits. So she got the bug and she got it. She just loved volunteering. So you never know when it will take off and where volunteering will lead you. Um, it's launched a lot of 
really great careers. It's launched a lot of interests in different um, academic areas. I've even heard of students who wanted to be a nurse and volunteered at a hospital and realized the smell of the chemicals made them sick. So they decided not to be um, a nurse. Others, you know, they may be encouraged to be coders. They tried a volunteer opportunity coding and decided it wasn't for them. They really preferred doing digital arts. So it's really nice that you can rule in and rule out things um, becoming a volunteer. And we really focus on getting you great, um, great volunteer opportunities that are real substantive experience. Um, a question about the College and Career Advantage Plan. Yes, it is $99 per year. Um, so I'm gonna go back and talk about the, the NSHSS offer. So for the College and Career Advantage Plan, um, it is $99 and it gives you all premium and shadowing volunteer projects. It gets you the tracking. Most importantly, it gets you the verifications because um, when we verify an hour, we can ask about your character strengths. We can qualify you for the President's Volunteer Service Award. And we can um, create those digital badges and the transcript that you have for the rest of your life. Like your academic transcript, once you've earned those grades, once you've built that transcript, it's yours forever. So we give you an enduring document that you can continue to share. Um, let's see. Someone's turning 16 in November and um, yes. So it just so happens I have a son who's turning 16 in November. He is considered a 15 year old for purposes of the 2021 um, President's Volunteer Service Award year. Um, and we have a request on a related topic to add the, um, the link for the 5 p.m. session into the Q&A box. So if I could have you uh, add that, Neely, that would be wonderful. Okay, someone here moved to the US in the eighth grade and didn't know volunteering was a big part of your college application till last year. If you volunteer enough this year and you're a junior, will colleges think that you're only doing it for them? They like to see consistency and they like to see that you've tried different things um, and they wanna know more. I think there was such a focus on volunteer hours it's not about the hours. It's about them getting to know you. It's about seeing um, what motivates and excites you because you're right. Volunteering is important and it is something you're supposed to do just like getting good grades um, and having extracurricular activities. But what I like to tell students is everything else related to volunteering is up to you. No one else can decide what type of volunteer opportunity you're interested in. That's your choice. Um, when you wanna volunteer, how you wanna volunteer in person or virtually, the type of volunteer project. Do you wanna lead a supply drive? Do you wanna do a campaign like get out the vote? Um, let's see, can people living abroad volunteer via, um, volunteer through volunteer crowd? You can, we only verify US-based um, nonprofits. What does US-based mean? It means that um, it's a, they've got a headquarters in the United States. I recognize that there are many nonprofits that um, are US nonprofits that have volunteer abroad opportunities, those count. Can you add your own projects to volunteer crowd? The answer is yes. If you go into track, um, then you will see right above, um, you'll see in a, kind of an aqua color, it says uh, add projects that's for you to uh, add your own volunteer project. Um, family discounts, not at this time. However, we are offering the uh, digital badges and transcript for free right now. And that will be um, $25 as a registration, as a one-time registration fee um, in just a few weeks. So that's um, our special offer today. The app, is free to use. It's really the, the services around it, the tracking, the verifications, and the character endorsement. Really good time um, for me to mention that if you're a student and you just need your 10 hours, we have projects on there that you don't need to be a premium member. So, um, and they're really the type of projects 
um, that are about um, getting your minimum hours. Maybe you're focused on other things. Maybe you're an athlete. Um, maybe you are a musician. Um, maybe there are other things you're involved in. If you just need 10 hours, you don't have to be a premium member. You can just um, look at some of those projects. They don't tend to be the resume building volunteer projects. So we find that the students who really wanna join college and career advantage really wanna distinguish um, their service learning and their contributions to the community. But we wanna be a place for all students. Um, I got a question, this is an excellent one. Thank you for asking it. Can you write us a letter? Um, what we do is we provide the letter of recommendation, request and send services. So let's say that you volunteered in a food bank for the last year and you got to know that volunteer coordinator. You would, um, and by the way, this feature has not come out yet, but because we have the email addresses of the people who signed up today, we will make that announcement. Um, so you would request a, vol a letter of recommendation from that individual um, and you would make that request through Volunteer Crowd. Uh, we would provide the prompts for that person to write the letter of recommendation. So we would coach them a little bit and then we would send that to the colleges that you request. So that's how that works out. Um, so I get a question that I get um, a lot. So it's around um, what aspects of the service are free. So I would say that there are projects that you can do and you don't have to be a premium member. Um, however, um, and those projects, again, are really for the individuals who are just looking for their 10 hours. If you want to build your transcript and find those resume building volunteer opportunities and shadowing projects, and if you want the digital badges and the transcript on your LinkedIn profile, um, then it makes sense for you to join the College and Career Advantage plan because you can build that transcript. And by the way, we don't throw you off when you graduate from high school. We've got a lot of college students. So you can join as young as um, middle school and you can stay on through you get, until you get through medical school. And we don't put an age limit on volunteering. And I know that um, there are a lot of volunteer clubs that do. Uh, for example, they're just high school volunteer clubs or just middle school volunteer clubs. We bring all of your volunteering together in one place, just like we have um, a volunteer platform where you can find, track, verify, and build your credentials. Um, how do you use the site to volunteer? Um, you look for a volunteer opportunity you like. Say, I want to volunteer, and you get all of the information about volunteering. Um, it's up to the student to reach out, build that relationship with the volunteer organization. Someone asked, do you have to be a citizen to uh, qualify for the President's Volunteer Service Award? Um, because we are a certifying organization, there are some rules that exist that are rules by points of light. They're not volunteer crowd rules. We have to, um, we have to follow those rules. And one rule is, is that you have to be a US citizen. Do we have volunteer projects nationwide? Can you show um, projects in many places like, oh, it jumped. Houston, Texas, we have a lot in Houston, Texas. And the reason is, is that we've got a lot of medical school students in Houston, Texas. So that's an area where we've really, we focused a lot on Texas this last year, um, just because that I mentioned earlier, we go where the demand is. So our college and career members that requested medical opportunities in Houston, that's what we delivered. Um, and that is another benefit, by the way, when you come to office hours and you say, you know, I really want to learn how to be a mobile app developer and I just can't find a project. Can you help me? Um, we do help our premium members find projects. And we'll, if it's not on the volunteer crowd uh, website, we will go ahead and look for a project for you. Um, I've found projects for students who want to become architects. I've found student projects for students who want to become research analysts in chemistry. And what I love is that we have so many different volunteering uh, projects. Is volunteering, oops, I'm sorry. Is volunteering or job or internships more important for college? Um, if you already volunteer at many places, actually there's really, there's no magic number of volunteer hours and there's no magic type of volunteering. 
um, this is this is what I tell students. If you go into volunteering and if you go into college saying that you want to be um, a software developer and all of your volunteering has been around helping animals, well, as a college admissions officer, maybe, you know, maybe you're, I would think that your heart is really in, in helping animals. Um, so what they're looking for is the story of you. If you're saying you're really interested in becoming a veterinarian and you volunteered um, in different rescue organizations and with a humane society, then they're absolutely, you've got a very strong narrative there for why you should become a veterinarian. If you wanna become a teacher and you become a volunteer um, tutor, that's all, that also speaks strongly of your dedication to going into an education career. Um, we see a lot of students who are um, helping with um, things like tutoring in math. They're, they want to go into a STEM field like engineering or um, science. Um, that's great. Let's see, I get this question a lot. I volunteer through Scouts, but I'm not sure how many hours you have. Would you, would I have to get the information? Yes, you do put it into the app. The great news is, is once we verify, it's verified for life. Um, rising seniors who have been volunteering the past three years, yes, but we do prorate the College and Career Advantage Plan. Um, so if you joined um, as a, um, if you joined as a sophomore, um, for example, um, I mentioned one of the students who uh, joined from NSHSS last year. She joined as a sophomore last year. She was a junior. Now she's a rising senior. Um, she paid the $99 um, a year to be part of volunteer crowd. We would prorate it back. Otherwise, trust me, we would have a lot of rising seniors coming to us at the very end, um, asking us to go back and, and verify all three years. Um, and it is work. It's a lot of work to get in touch with these organizations. And what we want to make sure of, though, is that verification is really important because when a college receives your verified transcript, we want them to be able to take that information and rely on it and say, this volunteer actually did um, volunteer these hours. It's not just something that they're self-reporting on their application. There's the third party that verified those hours so um, it really, it, um, we can really rely on it and we can make decisions about this applicant based on the fact that we know that they volunteered. Um, the program that offers the free digital badges is the College and uh, Career Advantage Plan and it won't be free forever. We are going to add this as a digital registration fee. Are there volunteer hours in law? Yes, there are. We do have law students who have um, done uh, pro bono volunteering and we do have nonprofits that are affiliated um, with things related to the law. And if there are no volunteer opportunities in the state you live in, hard to believe, but um, as a college and career advantage uh, member, we can help you find volunteer opportunities. And I did mention this earlier because of the the pandemic, we had a disproportionate number of students who needed um, a virtual volunteering. So that's been our focus area. Um, let's see, if you're a junior, is it too late to start volunteering? It's never too late. Um, let's see. And for the individual who um, says the account is closed, um, it looks like maybe you had joined volunteer crowd at one point in time, and now you want to come back, I would encourage you to come to the five o'clock or reach out to us directly because it's kind of hard to um, answer the question without looking at your account. And I, I, can't, uh, I can't switch screens right now. Um, do you have volunteer projects in Atlanta? Yes, a lot. We are coming up to the end now. Um, Grace and Sydney, would you like me to um, answer any one specific question right now or um, any closing remarks? <laughs> I think that we have a couple of duplicate questions in the Q&A. So I think that you have covered a decent amount. If you have any last thoughts on anything, that would be great to share, maybe some advice um, or anything closing, that would be awesome. 
I think the best thing to share is really, Neely, if you could put all four of those uh, links in, and I'll just go ahead and share those. And I put in links related to the questions that we always get. So um, this will go in the chat, this will go in the Q&A, and I believe it's already been put in both. If you have more specific questions, today we're talking about the President's Volunteer Service Award, and we can answer any questions um, after our 10 to 15 minute presentation. This is a link to the College and Career Advantage Plan. Um, and then to find projects, go to Volunteer Crowd and then look at Find Projects or look at Find in the app. And then we do have a blog post on the President's Volunteer Service Award. That combined with our office hours will pretty much answer just about any question we've ever heard. Um, and that link to our office hours, um, we have recurring office hours so you can hop in at any time. I'd really like to close by thanking um, NSHSS um, for having us today. Um, Neely, any parting uh, words? It's just really great to get these questions and I look forward to really supporting the students this year. I'll let Neely have the last word. Yeah, just uh, thank you everyone again. Thank you NSHSS and um, you know, there's a lot of questions that I think we're getting about or at least some questions in the Q&A about is it too late to start volunteering? Um, I would say and I don't know what your thought is Amy, but absolutely not. I mean, yes, you may be a junior, you may be a senior, but if you start putting in effort and then obviously while you're in college, there's going to be things that you apply for in college, even, you know, job application. So I would say, you know, there's definitely not too late. Yes, there's only people that have already started doing hours before you. That's not a problem. I would say just get out there and start, you know, getting involved in you'll like Amy mentioned before, you'll see how quickly, you know, your service transcript and just those hours start to build up. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. And I, um, I'm starting the other session right now. So I'm, if you're there or if you're going there, I'm going to be a minute or two late. Thank you so much.